complex numbers argon diagram let's do this example one so we can plot these complex numbers on this graph we call it an argon diagram the real part is just basically the x and the imaginary part is y so when we put it on the graph so the complex number z 2 in the x direction and 3 in the y direction so this is the complex number z 2 plus 3 uh, the complex number w so x is minus 2 and y is 4 so minus 2 and 4 this is w and this is z and then the conjugate of z is going to be the reflection of the z in the x-axis the real number will be the same too but the imaginary part becomes negative so 2 then 3 down So this is the complex number, the conjugate of z. Then the conjugate of w, we reflect in the x-axis again, we here. Minus 2, minus 4i. Now we can look at the modulus and the argument of a complex number. The modulus means just the length from the origin. So any complex number here, this length is the modulus. Then we use the Pythagoras. So this is the real part. This is the imaginary part. To find this length, we just use the Pythagoras. So the modulus of z is x squared plus y squared. Then we take the square root. To find the argument, which is the angle it makes with the positive x-axis, and it is equal to tan inverse opposite divided by adjacent so y divided by x if you want to do the other way around we know the angle and the length and we want to find the real part then x Now we want to find the adjacent, so adjacent is equal to hypotenuse, which is the modulus, the length, and cosine of the angle theta. The imaginary part, the length z times sine of the angle theta. Let's do some examples. Part 1, to find the length of the modulus of z, we square the x, so it's 2 squared plus 2 times root 3 all squared. So we get 4 plus 4 times 3 is 12. Then we're going to take the square root. So basically it's the square root of 16 which is equal to 4.
then to find the argument so we say tan inverse 2 root 3 divided by 2 so that is equal to just root 3 so inverse of root 3 in radian is pi divided by 3 Now we got complex number, the angle with the positive x axis is pi over 3 and its length is 4. So this is original number 2 plus 2 root 3i. So this is the Cartesian form. And this is the modulus and argument form. Let's do number two. First, we find the length, the modulus, one squared plus one squared, then take the square root. You don't need to worry about the minus sign. When we square it, it becomes one. So this is equal to root two. Then the argument we say tan inverse minus 1 divided by 1 and the calculator gives you answer to be minus pi over 4 So the length is root 2 and this angle is minus pi over 4 and the original complex number was 1 minus pi. So we can also just write theta equal to minus pi over 4. Here we could write theta is equal to pi over 3. So if your angle is in this quarter of this diagram called the first quadrant, there's no problem. Or well, angle is in this, and this is called the fourth quadrant, then there's no problem. Let's do example three. First the modulus three squared plus root 3 squared which gives us 9 plus 3 and we have to take the square root so this is square root of 12 which is equal to 2 times root 3 and then the argument root 3 divided by 3 The denominator is minus. Now from the calculator we get the answer to be minus pi over 6. Now look at on the argon diagram. Your real part is negative the imaginary part is positive. So the angles you look in the complex number to be there. But the calculator gives us minus pi over 6. According to the calculator, the calculator just given us this angle here. But we need this angle So if we add pi to it,
And that's what theta is. That's the angle we need. So this is the modulus and this is the argument. Let's do this number four. The modulus one squared plus one squared, which is root two. Then the argument, tan inverse, minus one divided by minus one. And the calculator to give us pi over 4. So if you do this on the argon diagram, minus 1 this way and minus 1, so this is where the complex number is. And what calculator done? Calculator given us this angle here. Because the anti clockwise, so given us a positive. But we need this angle here. So we have to say theta is equal to pi over 4. Now subtract pi from it. So we get theta equal to minus 3 quarters pi. Uh, let's do the other way around now. To find the x is the modulus 5 times cosine of the angle, 5 over 4. So we get 5 times root 2 over 2. y 5 times sine of this angle, 5 over 4, and we get the same. So therefore the complex number z is equal to 5 root 2 over 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2 i. Yep, x is going to be equal to 2 times cosine of pi over 3, which is 2 times half, which is 1 y equal to 2 times sine pi over 3 which gives us 2 times root 3 over 2 so that's just root 3 so therefore the complex number z is equal to 1 plus root 3 pi Now try these questions yourself when you've done them, then check the answers. Here are the answers.